Hi, my name is Savinia and this is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy. Today I'm going to teach you and give you some tips on how to play Doomlings. Designed by Justice and Andrew Meyer and published by Doomlings. A big thank you to the publisher for sending me a copy and giving me the opportunity to play. I've enjoyed playing this quick and engaging card game where you and your friends are going to build the best species possible in a world that's about to end. What's fun about this game is the way it balances lighthearted strategy with a bit of chaos as you navigate through different catastrophes before everything collapses. In this two to six player game, species of doomlings try to outsmart each other's dominance before the world's inevitable destruction. You draw and play trait cards that add more abilities to your species, making them more adaptable, resilient and mischievous, so they can assert their dominance while also dealing with catastrophes that can throw your plans into chaos. You will play through different ages, each with its own challenges. The goal is to score the most points by the time the final catastrophe hits and the world ends. To set up the game, you start by separating all the cards. Set aside the Birth of Life card. The gene pool cards have different colors, but all have the same numbers. Give one gene pool card to each player. For now, place the five face up in front of you. Separate the traits, the catastrophes, and the ages. Shuffle the decks and place them in the center of the table. Each player draws trait cards to start their hand. At the start of the game, you draw five trait cards as indicated by your gene pool card. Keep the remaining trait cards in the middle of the table. Now, let's set up the ages deck. Deal three piles of three ages cards face down. Randomly deal one catastrophe card on each pile. Shuffle each pile separately. Stack each pile of four cards on top of each other. Place the birth of life card on top of the deck. Place the ages deck in the middle of the table. You're now ready to begin your journey through the ages. Randomly pick a first player and that player will reveal the birth of life card. Moving clockwise, each player follows the effect of the current age. Then each player, in their turn, plays one trait card's face up. Traits can boost your score, give you special abilities, or provide defense against upcoming catastrophes. Traits come in four colors and one colorless. Each color has a style of play. Blue traits are often defensive, green traits encourage growth, purple traits are sneakier, and red traits can be riskier or more rewarding depending on the draw. Colorless will have catch-all abilities. It's interesting because the first time I played, I didn't realize that, and I played the color that represents what I do in games generally. It was really cool. All traits also have a name and something funny here and points here. If the point has a compass star instead of a number, it means its value is resolved at the world's end. Until then, its face value is treated as zero. Most traits will also have an effect that you resolve immediately as explained on the card. Age's effects last this round only, while traits effects last as long as you have this trait in your traits pile. If you lose the traits, you lose the effect. There are also symbols you'll find on some traits. Those are for an action played immediately as you put the trait in play. These can be played out of turn, play them as indicated. Those come into effect at world's end. Those will impact your end score, most of the time adding bonuses. Some traits interact with others and some can be stacked for more powerful effects. You also have those traits with the gold star and gold border. They are very powerful. They are dominant traits as written here and you can have a maximum of two. They don't have to be the same color. If you have two dominant traits in play and you have to place a third one from the top of the deck, discard it immediately and do not replace it. There's only one exception to this rule and it's with a heroic trait combined with the birth of a hero age. In this exceptional case, you can add your third dominant trait to your trait pile. All other traits you've just played will be added normally to your species into your trait pile face up in front of you. To end your turn, you have to stabilize your hand by drawing or discarding traits cards up to your gene pool limit. Once you're stable, it's the end of your turn. The player on your left plays one trait card and stabilizes her gene pool. Once all players have taken their turn, the first player flips the top of the ages card and the next round can begin. 
If the effect is a one-time event, all players play the effect in turn order before you take your turn. If the effect is a rule, it lasts until the end of this age. Sometimes traits or a catastrophe reduce or grow your gene pool. You track the changes by rotating or flipping your gene pool cards so that the new maximum value is facing upward. If you're at one and need to reduce, stay at one. Likewise, you cannot go above eight. If a trait leaving your gene pool affects your gene pool, you must adjust it immediately, even if you had enough to reach the maximum. The event of the trait leaving causes the change. However, you never have to adjust your hand immediately. You always wait until you stabilize at the end of your turn to adjust your hand size. Another big thing that can happen is that you have no more trait cards at the start of your turn. In this case, you draw three trait cards and pass your turn. However, you cannot discard unless invited to. If you still have one card, you must play it, even if you don't want to. Most ages are peaceful, but sometimes you trigger a catastrophe that everyone must deal with. Catastrophes, when drawn, must be resolved immediately, and they often shake up the game by wiping out certain traits or forcing players to discard cards. The first player is now the next one on the left, to keep track of catastrophes, start a new ages pile next to the previous one. Ignore World's End's effects written in yellow unless it's the third catastrophe as the game continues until the third catastrophe. When this final catastrophe strikes, you get ready for the World's End. In the final round, no more turns are taken. Like the previous two catastrophes, you first resolve the gene pool effect and the catastrophic effect. Then each player in turn order, check their face-up trays for World's End symbols and resolve their effects. Now resolve the World's End effect of the catastrophe. When it's resolved, the game ends and players count up their points. This one is minus one because of World's End and with all these cards it's 13 points. Add the final face value of your compass cards. These three are now worth three points each, so nine points. Also tally all the bonuses or modifiers you might have from other drop of life cards. This one is four from the size of the gene pool. This one is minus one plus five, so four points. And for this gray one, a total of four points. This is a total of 34 points. The player with the highest score after the final catastrophe wins and is declared the most successful species in this doomed world. Ties are resolved by chance. Draw a card from the top of the traits deck and apply its face value or Peter just walks through. <laughs> Once you play the base game you can explore additional content or house rules to make your games longer or shorter and change the speed at which you rotate the first player. You can even do card drafting. It can be fun. Now my tips to win at Doomblings are pick a color that matches your natural inclination. You'll perform better. Doomlings is more about the fun you will have while playing, have fun with it, and laugh when something wild happens, like losing your entire hand. Keep an eye on the Aegis deck and try to anticipate when a catastrophe might hit so you can prepare. Be ready to change your strategy based on what traits you draw and the catastrophes that occur. And that's how you play Doomlings. It's a fun, casual, quick game that you can play with beginner and experienced players. I like how each game feels different depending on the traits or, and catastrophes that come up. If you find this video helpful, please give it a like. And if you're interested in learning more board games, consider subscribing and clicking the bell to get notified when I post new videos. It's a great way to stay updated on the games I teach and it helps support the channel. Thank you. I started making videos back in 2020 and it's been an amazing experience learning so many skills to make this channel possible. It has grown beyond my expectations but now I want to grow it even more and for that I need your help. I have a Patreon page that allows for support on a monthly basis and a buy me a coffee page where you can support me as a one-off. The links are in the video description. If you are able and willing to contribute I would be truly grateful. If there is a game you would like me to teach, leave it in the comments. I will definitely check it out. Bye now.